in love with her and being innocent at that, you know, that at such a young age, I mean, it helped me to see things clearly. It also helped me to see that, you know, maybe we weren't necessarily right for each other and, uh, you know, we didn't have to go off in our separate ways. And But it doesn't change, you know, what she taught me, what I got from her, and, you know, how she helped me at that part of my life. And, you know, she is the person that helped me kind of see the music of life and what, you know, was really going to make my life happen. Because, I mean, at the time, I thought, well, I, I would be, you know, a, a school teacher, probably coach football, uh, living up in some Midwestern state like Kansas. And <laughs> <laughs> very, very far from what I do now. And I, yeah, I couldn't imagine being that now. I think I, I would, I'm too rebellious and too sarcastic and too outspoken to be somebody like that. But um, like I said, she definitely was an inspiration. And so that's why the book is, you know, kind of dedicated to her. And some people, I think, know who she is. Okay. But, I'm not gonna let the rest of the world uh, know that. That that little secret's for me. Well, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most talked about part of your book for me? Well, with all the letters that I've ever gotten over the years about that book, I think it's the the biggest request I've gotten is what the letter at the end of the book actually said okay. that, that she brought that she sends to him, and that you know you see him reading at the beginning. Um, and I've always had this characteristic in every book that I've written that there is some kind of a letter. Okay. Um, but it was unlike every other book that I've written since then where you actually get to read the letter, that one kind of remained a secret. And the metaphor behind it is, if as the reader, it's what you wanted to say. What would you say in that situation if you were one of these characters? Okay. And so it adds a little bit of a mystery to it, which I think is a, is a great literary device. Um, and so that, that tends to be the most talked about, plus, you know, the characters in it and some of the things they say. I mean, the metaphor behind the music of life, which again is explained in the end of the novel, uh, is also, you know, one that I get from fans. So. so why do you think they are so intrigued by that part? Mystery, we're always mystery. intrigued by mystery. I mean, we, we're either very curious about the things that we don't know or very afraid of the things that we don't know. Uh, sometimes those things go very hand in hand, um, which adds a, a great you know, literary dynamic to any book. Uh, but I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it's about not knowing. And trying to, as a reader, you know, I hope they can put themselves in that place where you know, they, get a, they have a chance to say what they would want to say in that situation. And maybe that's, Maybe what they say is what they would say to a loved one, you know, when they, they were in that kind of a situation. Because, you know, part of becoming happy in life and, and, and coming to fullness in your own life is having to let go of things that you, that may be bad for you, you can't see it, or letting go. It's like they say with love, I mean, to, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you have to let it go to let it come back for it to really mean anything in your life. And, um, so, you know, that mystery definitely adds, you know, to that, to that idea as well. And so moving on to your second book, that was a collection of works. What yep. was your favorite story from the book? Hmm. I think probably Soul Kitchen. Okay. Um, it was about, it was a short story about my time in New Orleans. Uh, as a young man, I spent uh, almost a year there when I was between the ages of 20 and 21, and it was actually before I actually wrote The Music of Life. Uh, but, you know, it was dealing with, you know, innocence loss, kind of, you know, understanding how life really worked, you know, trying to become a professional musician, and really dealing with a city that can tear you apart, build you back up, you know, change your perspective on life, and I think every writer has a city that, you know, adds a very cathartic nature to who they are. Um, Hemingway and Fitzgerald had Paris, I had New Orleans. So, but I like the end of the letter too, uh, which is kind of a mystery, sci-fi, horror type story that I never thought I was capable of writing and started with one, you know, with a writing exercise, and the, the line was, you know, do a story that starts with, um, it was a dark and stormy night, which is, you know, the biggest cliche in any kind of horror story. And I changed it up because I did 
you know, it was dark and stormy night. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't because <laughs> tonight would be too common for that, and, or too uncommon for that, I take that back. And then I took the story in a different direction. My best friend, who has also helped me as an editor over the years, <laughs> read that story like, you never write anything like this. This was awesome. You should write more stuff like that. And I've dabbled it a little bit. I've added those same things about mystery to other stories. Okay. But, uh, but those two alone would probably be my favorite out of the book. Hmm. So how is writing a collection of stories different from writing a novel? Uh, not part at all, because you know, if you have a bunch of short stories or poetry things you've plugged over the years, all you do is just put it in a book. <laughs> It's the best way to get it out there. And the book is, you know, early writings in my career. And while I may not have written those same things now as I did then, um, I, you know, I think it's pretty neat to go back and, and look at it all these years later and kind of cringe a little bit at some of the things that I've written, but also still be in love with the same kind of stories even now. Okay. So. So how did you come to write The American Experience? Uh, I was still in college at the time. Uh, it, was a, it was an exercise in a literary class that I had. And um, while the class turned out to be a big disaster because the professor was horrible and even tried to fail me in the class, um, the essay came right after 9-11. Okay. And so my perspective on life and how I viewed the world kind of changed a little bit, and I wanted to write something that dealt with America. And, you know, looking at it from the, the standpoint of a writer. Someone who, the only way to understand something is to, either is to be a part of it, but also take a step back and look at it from the outside. And, you know, whether you're looking at, you know, Robert Frost or Walt Whitman and, and other great writers who have talked about America, this is what they do. And so I thought it was kind of an interesting experience. No pun intended with the title. <laughs> but that's how the American experience came about. And it was my own views on how I viewed the country. Uh, which, you know, it's almost been 10 years, too, since I wrote that essay. I mean, we're, well, eight years. It's 2009 now, so it's been eight years since 9-11. You know, my, my view on America hasn't really changed since then, and that's kind of, and especially as I've gotten older and gotten into my 30s, that's what I think is pretty remarkable. And with your third book, Returning Home, you set out to write a very personal story. Hmm. Why did you decide to write about your family? Because family is the one thing that we truly know, whether we've had a great family, a tragic family. Um, you know, we, Kind of what Marianne Williams said, you know, you as a writer, you have to, you have to write what you know. Anything else will lead you away from the pulse. And I come from a very unique family. I don't. They're tragic in their own way. But uh, when I started writing that, and I actually started writing it about the time that I was writing *Was It Life* too. Uh, my my grandparents, um, who I was very close to on my mother's side, had. Both of them had passed away, and it kind of helped raise me a little bit because I come from a divorced family. And, um, so I mean, it was a, the novel was a way of looking at, you know, how we grow up within this kind of family structure and how our perceptions change as we get older. So. And was there any importance to the timing of this piece? I think so. Like I said, I mean, you know, you're dealing with. I was 21 years old, I was dealing with death of somebody very close. I had never dealt with that. And, you know, this person that had instilled so much in my life was gone. You know, my, my mom's dad. And I, you know, felt this great loss because, you know, my teacher, my, my source of wisdom, and, you know, wasn't there anymore. And there were a lot of things that I didn't understand, you know, that it would take years to finally come to understand. Um, you know, hence, you know, the, your, your, your perception of life as a young man to becoming an older man. So I think timing had a very big part of it. I think it was a novel that I needed to write. Uh, I think not necessarily to 